In this video, I'm going to share with you my faves and fails for the month of March. And we've got skincare, makeup, fashion, books, movies, and at the end, a channel that I urge you to follow. So settle down, grab yourself a drink, put your feet up, because it's going to be a longie, and let's get started. And I'm going to start firstly with skincare. And I am absolutely loving a new to me product and a new to me brand actually, and this is it. It's Geek and Gorgeous and it's their Skin Melting Balm. Now I love a balm cleanser and I used to use Take the Day Off by Clinique. That was my go-to for many years. Then I fiddled around and tried some other brands, including actually the Paula's Choice, which I really like, which actually comes in a tube, but it is really effectively a balm. But I saw Angie Hot and Flashy use this about a month or two ago and I thought I'm going to give it a go and I really really like it. So let me show you what it looks like. It's quite reasonably priced. It's a fairly flat tub. It feels really soft. Oh, it feels so nice. You rub it into your hands and it emulsifies and then you can add water. You just massage it into your face and it really does help to get the eye makeup off, particularly the mascara. I think it's very effective. There's no fragrance to it because I'm allergic to all fragrances, so I can't use fragrance. And I think it's a really good and effective product. It's around £14 or $14, which I think for the size is pretty good. When you think about the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Cleanser, which I do like, that's a much smaller pot, although to be fair, I haven't checked the weight of it as compared to this. This is sort of flatter and wider as opposed to the e.l.f., which is taller but smaller. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I think it's an American brand and you can get it here on Amazon in the UK, but you can also get it directly from their website. And all the links to all the products that I talk about today will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now, the first makeup product I want to talk about is the Urban Decay Naked 2 Basics Palette. And this is it here. Now, I'm quite late to the party with Urban Decay and I only actually bought one of their products a few months ago and that's their and that's their eyeshadow primer. And I think it's because historically they weren't so easy to get hold of in the UK. And I had seen this palette discussed on YouTube, but I think what it was is I was looking for a palette that was neutral. I didn't want any sheens or glitters or anything like that. I just wanted a simple matte palette. And this is the one. Now, what I really love about this, and I know it probably looks a little bit boring to you, but what I really love about it in a way is the fact that it's boring because the shades are neutral and easy to wear. And it's what I've got on today. So in a previous video from a few weeks ago, which I'll link down below for you, I did a get ready with me on camera using the palette, but it's a different eye look to the one I've got today. I've tried a different one. And this shows you, I think, the versatility of this simple palette. Even though it's cool neutral shades, you have got a lot of versatility there. And let me tell you, I've actually got it on my eyebrows as well, because there's some nice taupey shades. I used this shade on my brows today, this middle one here. And the other shades I've got on my eyelids today are this one, this is on the actual lid and then I used that one on the outer corner of my lid and then I used this one as a tight line and I think it really has worked and I'm really delighted with the outcome actually and it was quick and easy to do. This is the sort of look I might do if I were going out to work or meeting friends, something simple, quick and easy but I wanted to enhance my eyes. And I think this palette is just such an easy palette to use. And what I like about it as well is I think it would be great for travel. You've got a mirror and you can get different eye looks and do your eyebrows as well. I think it's an absolute winner. The only reason I think I dilly dallied about buying it was because it's quite pricey for a small palette. Because it's about £28 or even $35, I think, which is quite pricey for a small palette. But because of its versatility, I'm really glad I bought it and I am absolutely loving it. Now, let's talk about Fenty Beauty and a couple of their products that I really love. One is the Wear Even Concealer and the other is the Hella Thick Mascara. They are both such great products. The prices are okay. I would say they're not, they're not exactly affordable, but they're not super expensive either. And they are excellent products. The mascara is really great because it doesn't clump and yet it still gives you that thick, hella thick in fact, <laughs> look, which is what I particularly love. Although I'm not wearing it today, it has to be said, but that's because I'm trying another mascara. But I really do reach for it on a weekly basis, particularly if I'm going out in the evening and I want a bit of va-va-voom. 
and the concealer again is so consistently good it smooths the under eye it stays in put all day the only difficulty I had was choosing the right shade and in the end I had to go into the store because I found the colour represented on the box and on the page of the website was a little bit misleading but honestly I absolutely love it it's just a really excellent product and actually it has tempted me to try more Fenty products the only trouble is quite a lot of them have fragrance which is why I can't use them because I'm allergic to fragrance but these two products really are winners now the next product I want to talk about is the Satin Kajal Pencil by Victoria Beckham it is an absolutely fantastic eye pencil. It's actually the best eye pencil I've ever used. Now, <laughs> you're going to laugh, but I was going to compare it to the Lisa Eldridge pencil because I actually much prefer the Victoria Beckham to the Lisa Eldridge. But when I swatched them, <laughs> there actually isn't much of a difference, is there? So that demo doesn't quite work but honestly I just find the Victoria Beckham so much easier to use. What I particularly like about the Victoria Beckham is it's got a little sponge smudger at one end so it means you can apply the pencil and then smudge the line out or rather than having to get a brush or a q-tip or your fingers. I have it in the shade Coco and I just love that shade. Now there's very little to choose between the two in terms of the shades that I've got between Lisa's and Victoria's but there's something about the, the creaminess and the malleability if that's the right word of Victoria's that is just a winner for me and I reach for it so regularly that I'm afraid Lisa's been relegated to the back of the drawer. Now it's quite expensive I think it's a little bit more expensive than the Lisa's it's around £30 or say $35 but it is a great pencil and if you're looking for a pencil that lasts Honestly, I've not found a better pencil than this. Now, talking of pencils, let's move on to lip pencils. And I have two. One is affordable and one is more pricey. Now, the affordable one is by NYX. And I have talked about this pencil before, but I just want to show you what a great pencil it is. It's very affordable. Mine's in the shade Nude Beige, which is more of a dusty rose, I would say. But it's a great shade for me. But it comes in 28 shades, I think. It's a, it's a really fantastic pencil. And by the way, I think today I may be right in saying that in The Guardian, Sally Hughes actually recommends this pencil. And it is really good and great for the price. But in the more luxury makeup space, the Lisa Eldridge Sculpt and Shape pencil is also fantastic. And I have it in the shade 2C. And let me show you that. You can see actually can't you they're not that dissimilar so the Lisa Eldridge is a little bit softer I would say in terms of application but they are both really great pencils at different price points but very similar and really pack a punch. Now you might also be pleased to know that I've got two lip products one is affordable and one is more luxury. Now the affordable is the Physician's Formula Diamond Last Lip tint I think it's called. You can tell what kind of shades I like can't you because this is another dusty rose I'll just swatch it for you. It's such a great colour it's got great staying power as well and it's very reasonably priced I think I bought this from Amazon. Again Physicians Formula is one of those brands that's not so easy to get hold of in the UK but a really great product at a really great price and at the other end of the market we've got this luxury lip tint which is by House Labs. And it's what I'm wearing today and I've sort of fallen in love with these lip glosses. I think it's actually called a lip tint and I have it in the shade Macaron. Oh, I forgot to tell you what the Physician's Formula shade is. I've forgotten the name of it. I'll pop it on the screen anyway. But the House Labs is so lovely. Now, the House Labs apparently it contains something that's supposed to plump your lips up. But what I really like about it is it doesn't contain fragrance and there's no stinging or anything like that. I have been alternating wearing it with the Physician's Formula and I absolutely love it. I think it goes really well over the pencil. I'm wearing the the Lisa Eldridge pencil underneath. It's got really good staying power for a lip gloss, I would say, and I absolutely love it. Let me swatch a bit for you. This is in the shade Macaron, but as you can see, again, it's a kind of dusty rose, isn't it? Which is my sort of look, really. It's my go-to look, I would say, but it's great on the lips. It feels really comfortable. When I first applied it, and I did talk about this in my testing new makeup video, which I'll link down below for you, 
it did feel a bit sticky on the lips to begin with but I've had it on for about half an hour now and it feels absolutely great and I've forgotten I've got it on. Now I want to talk to you about one fashion item and it's what I've got on today and it's a cotton sweater by H&M with a half zip and I'm going to zoom you out just so you can see a bit more of it. So you can zip it right up if it's chilly and I tend to wear it like this but I have zipped it up. It's got quite wide sleeves and they're quite long actually so I do have to roll them up a bit when I'm kind of doing stuff at home. And it's only £35 and I have it in a striped version as well and I absolutely love them. They're incredibly soft. You can layer things underneath which of course is great for me because I do feel the cold and at the moment although it's a beautiful day today and I think it's going to be about 20 degrees. We're not quite there yet and tomorrow it's going to be down to 13 so it is still chilly but I can wear these with a long sleeve top underneath. I think there's another colour available but I think it was sold out when I looked but, but all the details will be down below for you in the description box. So we've now come to the fails part of the video and these are makeup products that just didn't work for me. And let's start with these foundations by Wet n Wild and I love Wet n Wild as a brand, I really do and I know a lot of people really love this foundation and I have it in two different versions both of which didn't work for me the Photo Focus Matte and the Photo Focus Dewy and neither of them I'm afraid worked for me. I really tried to love them. Now the reason I've got both is because I couldn't get hold of the Dewy at first. I could only get it through Amazon US which I did because I happened to have a voucher. So I tried the matte version which I could get here in Boots and neither of them worked. It was a real shame. They both broke up on me. They left my skin blotchy. However many ways I tried to apply them with a sponge, with my fingers, with a brush, none of them worked at all. So really disappointed with them. My skin just didn't agree with what was in it and they just didn't wear well on my complexion at all. Now the next product that I was really disappointed didn't work for me was this Quick Stick by Tarte. Now this was recommended by Lisa J and so I thought I'd give it a go because it looked quite good. It's a double-ended pencil. So at one end you've got a liner, which is nice. And at the other end you've got an eyeshadow stick. A nice idea because you've got two in one as it were. But honestly, I didn't enjoy the shade. I didn't think it looked particularly attractive on me. That was the stick. And the liner just didn't stay. It didn't last on my lid. I just didn't enjoy it at all. I was really disappointed. I think maybe it was partly the shade. I didn't particularly love it. But also I just didn't find that the product stayed on my lids. They kind of slipped off throughout the day. They wore away. And I just wasn't impressed with the quality and, and it was quite a pricey product. And another eye pencil I was really disappointed about and I really want to love this brand and I will try other products from the brand. And that's this pencil by Sculpted by Amy. Now Sculpted by Amy is an Irish female founded brand and they're quite popular here in the UK and they're now stocked by Boots. And I was particularly interested in this because it's a double-ended pencil and it's got a white pencil at one end which I wanted to use on the bottom rim of my eye. So I was really excited about this because someone had recommended it, I can't remember who, and they said that this white was a really good colour for brightening your eyes. So I thought, well, that would be great. I'll give that a go. I mean, it isn't actually white. It's kind of a pinky colour. It actually looks a bit whiter when you use it on the rim of your eye. And then at the other end, you've got a... And at the other end, you've got a black pencil but I bought it to put here and it lasted about five minutes it just broke up it didn't stay it looked absolutely awful actually and I have no idea why I tried it a few times it just did not work for me at all maybe there are certain ingredients like in the tart that my eyes just don't agree with at all and yet others I'm perfectly fine with like the Victoria Beckham for example <laughs> very very odd don't know why but very disappointed with it for me. It just didn't work, unfortunately. And just a couple more makeup products. The L'Oreal Telescopic Lift Mascara, I really didn't enjoy. It wasn't telescopic at all. I mean, maybe it's because I don't like these rubbery brushes. This one, I think, is trying to emulate the push-up lashes by Charlotte Tilbury because it's got a flat side and a round side. I didn't like it at all, didn't work for me and neither did this infallible eye pencil by L'Oreal. In fact, I'm always slightly nervous about having a retractable pencil. I know sometimes it can work. See, look, they're a bit cheaply made. 
and certainly this one I don't know whether it was a faulty one but that's the trouble with retractables okay there's a bit more left in the bottom but really that's not very satisfactory is it and you can't sharpen it obviously so no very disappointed with that it does have a smudger at the end when you pull it out the whole thing comes out and then you've got to take it and stick it back in the pencil so yeah a bit cheaply made and not very impressive really now I thought we'd talk a little bit about films or movies and I have to say I have seen quite a few good ones in the last few weeks and the first one I want to mention is The Holdovers. Now this is an absolutely lovely film, it's, it's warm, it's fuzzy, it's very well acted, it stars Paul Giamatti as a kind of curmudgeonly goodbye Mr Chips character. It's set in New England in a school over Christmas it's about a teacher and the relationship he has with his pupils and how they learn from their mistakes and how they grow as people. God, that sounds so naff, but I don't know how better to express it really because there's definitely a narrative arc, as they say in the movie business. But it's just a really delightful film and the best supporting actress at the Oscars was won by one of the actors in it, Divine Joy Randolph, who's an absolute joy. But it also has one of my favourite actresses in it, Carrie Preston, who played such a fantastic character in The Good Wife, which I adored and I now understand that her character is going to get her own series. Now the next film I want to mention is called American Fiction. In fact, it's still on in the cinemas here in the UK. We watched it on Netflix. I think all of these films are either available on Netflix or Amazon Prime. And American Fiction is a really good film. Again, it is a little bit character driven, but it also tackles a very difficult subject, racism but it tackles it so well and it's from the point of view of a writer who is himself black and it's just so clever, it's just really well thought out, it's funny, it's poignant, it has a good story, it's well acted, in fact I didn't know the lead actor, my husband did because he'd seen him in the TV series Westworld but I'd not come across him before. And another film we both really enjoyed is called Nyad and it's about Diana Nyad who was a long distance endurance swimmer. Again, I knew nothing about her at all. Superbly well acted both by Annette Benning and Jodie Foster and highly recommend it. It's about a woman's endurance and persistence and obstinacy and she's not a likeable character but she really grabs life by both hands and she's got amazing staying power and it was a fascinating story. And the final US film I want to mention is Killers of the Flower Moon. Now I was quite resistant to watching this because it's Martin Scorsese, it's over three hours long and I thought do I want to watch another Irishman because that was bad enough, that was long enough. But my son said he'd watched it and he said what had worked for him is he'd read the Wikipedia page about the backstory of the film and that had made him want to watch it so I didn't know this so we'd started watching it and we'd given it an hour and I just said to my husband after an hour I thought I don't really think I can watch this it's just it's jumping about I don't know what's going on I don't know what it's about it just all seems very confusing all I could tell was it was set in the early 19th century so I said I wasn't going to watch it. Then I spoke to my son, he said read the Wikipedia page about it. So I did and I thought okay, now I understand why it was worth making this film and why I need to carry on watching it. So I did. And that's because the story needs to be told. It's a really important story in the history of the state but that sort of story could have happened anywhere to many oppressed people because it is about a tribe that actually ostensibly wasn't oppressed but turned out to be. And it's really well acted. I absolutely love Jesse Plemons. He's definitely one of my favourites. I haven't seen him in that many films, but I thought he was really excellent. Leonardo DiCaprio is good. Although sometimes I feel like you can actually see him acting, if you know what I mean. Because maybe it's unfair because we know what he's like or we knew what he was like in Titanic. But he obviously likes to play these gritty roles and I don't know whether I always believe him in them. And I think that is partly a difficulty of watching famous actors playing roles because there's something great about, for example, in the next film I'm going to talk about, where you don't actually know any of the actors. Well, actually, even in the American fiction, I didn't know any of the actors there. So I think there is something about that, but I think it's a really important story and it was well done. You certainly got under the skin of the time that it is set in that rural gritty dirtiness of the period and I did ultimately enjoy it and I'm glad I saw it but we did divide it into three parts like all 
<laughs> because watching it all at once was a bit too much and that's the advantage of watching it on Netflix of course. And finally I just want to mention a Korean film, a South Korean film called Past Lives which is also on Netflix. It's slow but it's lovely, it's about relationships, it's about partings and reunions, it's a beautifully shot film directed and written by a, a Korean-American woman and we both really enjoyed it. Now let's turn to TV and the one TV series I really want to recommend is called Unbelievable and it's from 2019, it's on Netflix. If you like police procedural stories based on a true story as well then I think you'll really enjoy it. It's full of wonderful actors and again in this TV series I didn't know any of the actors except for Tony Collette and they were all fantastic. Now it is a difficult subject, it is about rape, however you don't see anything untoward on the screen, you just see suggestions of it and I think that might be down to the fact that it's directed by a woman. It's eight episodes it's really well done, it's very gripping and unfortunately it's an indictment of all police forces around the world, not just those particular police forces. But we're going through very similar issues here in the UK about the way rape is reported and how the dots are not joined up in order to get convictions. It's a really well acted, gripping watch. Now the final two items I want to mention in my March favourites are books and the first one is this book by Indian Knight, it's called The Beauty Edit. What works when you're older? Now Indian Knight's a journalist and she's been writing a column in the Sunday Times for years and years and she writes about beauty, fashion, shopping. She's written a couple of novels I think but she wrote some really good books back in the years of austerity about shopping and about making do and mend. She's of Indian Belgian heritage but she's been living over here I think since she was a, a little girl and she writes really well about beauty. Now she's in her late 50s I believe and this book is really really useful. It's got chapters on skincare which include tweakments and it will give you examples of products. So for example here it's got eight brands for spot prone mature skin and they include Bioderma, La Roche-Posay, CeraVe, Paula's Choice etc. And then it will also give you some examples of makeup to try. So here she's got the six best moisturisers and skin tints which include Laura Mercier, L'Oreal, Ilia and Hourglass. So she gives a really good mixture of high-end and affordable products and she writes so well, she writes really amusingly and it's just a delightful book. Finally I want to mention this huge tome, <laughs> Recipes for an Easier Life in the Kitchen. Now I have to say I'm not a very good cook, I have a few basics and I, I need a guide on how to cook decent dishes time after time because I've only got a few basics. The basics I can make well or if I try to be inventive I ten <laughs> it tends to turn out pretty badly so I definitely need a guide and it gives you great ideas. She pulls her ideas from all over the world and many cookbooks that she's researched. And for example she's given me a five minute way to cook carrots, five minutes because carrots can be notoriously slow to cook particularly if you cut them in rounds but honestly in the book she gives this five minute version which involves water, butter, a pan and some carrots and it literally does take five minutes, it's really clever. So if you are looking for a cookbook that's a joy to read and has some great tips in it then you can't go wrong with this book The Secret of Cooking. So there you have it, those are my March faves and fails. Now before I go and before I ask you to comment or subscribe to my channel I just want to mention another channel by a lovely friend of mine who I've never met but we've communicated through YouTube and her name is Sandra Salin. Now I'm sure lots of you watch her anyway. She's 83, she's a fantastic woman and she's now going through chemotherapy and radiotherapy and her latest video talks about that and I would love it if you would go and subscribe to her channel even though she's not making any videos at the moment I don't think because she's going through treatment because it would be wonderful to get her subscriber count up while she's going through treatment. It would really buoy her up, I'm sure it would. So please if you could take a moment to go and visit her channel and subscribe and I know it would make a big difference to her and I'm sure it would cheer her up loads to know that she's got new subscribers even though she's not actually making videos at the moment. So there you have it, those are my March faves and fails. Now let me know in the comments, have you tried any of these products? Have you read the books? Have you seen the films? What are your favourite books and films? And if you can't get enough of me I have a monthly newsletter 
and in that you will find recommendations for beauty, fashion and lifestyle products along with books, films, music, podcasts and all the other bits and bobs that make our lives worthwhile. And thank you so much for watching, it means the absolute world to me, it really does. And I hope you're all doing really well and I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Bye!